Well, John Browning, welcome back to your podcast this week. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a great day. I love it. That's a great answer. It is a great day. I, I brought with me a drink. It's a, um, it's a generic drink. It's a 100% natural seltzer. I like carbonated water. And this one's flavored. And most people think I'm weird, but I like it. Um, but I grew <laughs> up, John, I, well, I know. I am. <laughs> uh, but I grew up um, during the cola wars. Remember the oh. cola wars? I, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we probably all remember those and all the blind taste tests and all of that. So we all we all know what a cola is, if I ask for that. But we're not going to talk about colas today or soft drinks, but we're going to talk about something very similar called a coli. And a lot of people don't know what that is because when I mentioned that to them, they're like, what is a coli? Did you mispronounce it? No, no, a coli. Well, I'll let you explain it because you're the, you're the expert on, on this podcast. And um, tell us what a coli is. Well, this is uh, what, and we've touched on this in, in some other episodes of the podcast. So. Yeah. This is your cost of living index. Okay. B O L I. Okay. And it's, it's it's really related to inflation, which we have heard a lot about recently. Okay. Uh, really, yeah. since COVID, we've kind of gone through the COVID, the pandemic, and then the uh, the time period after that, a lot of a lot of folks, a lot of businesses ordering a lot of supplies, kind of like, oh, we're free after the pandemic. So what what does that mean for inflation? There's a large amount of demand and not as much supply. Supply hasn't caught up yet. So there's some debate as to whether you know is is inflation really as high as it seems because. Uh, currently, I think the most recent month shows it uh, inflation, which is measured by CPI, which is the consumer price index that the government uses. And you can find that if you go out to the BLS, the Bureau of Labor Statistics dot gov, I believe, website, you can find all this information that I'll, that I'll share with you. But I believe it's about 5% right now. Okay. And, so, and that's inflation. That's inflation. And that really re- reverts back to that cost of living. What does it cost to live for, for you, for, for me? Well, okay. So case in point. All right. So my son, my eldest son and his wife live in Camarillo, California. I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. The cost of living is a little different, right? That, that, so there's yeah. an index out there that says, well, uh, a gallon of milk in Arkansas is $1.32 and a gallon of milk in California is $4.82 or something like that, right? Is that kind of what it is for us lay people? And, and that, that's right. And that's, um, and by the way, having lived in Hawaii, I can tell you a gallon of milk is closer to $6. <laughs> oh my God. That's like a dollar a pound, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's painful in, in Hawaii, but the weather maybe and the, and the scenery, maybe, maybe it's worth uh, it. Yeah. Right? Good offset. <laughs> um, so Coley is, so, so you need to know the cost of living index that's tied to inflation and inflation is, um, how, how much spending power my dollar has is, it, I mean, how do you. Right. And how much is it rising over time? And, and as we look at, there's a, there's a big debate out there right now. Are we going to see deflation? Some people think that. And other people think, oh, this is massive inflation that we're seeing right now. What are you talking about, you deflationary people? What are you talking about? And I think the, there's there's two interesting aspects of this that uh, most on either far side of either argument, I always I always seem to find the the right answer somewhere in the middle of yeah. the two sides, right? So first of all, the bond market, those guys are really smart. There's trillions of trillions of dollars flowing around out there. There's more mar- there's more money in the bond market, a lot more money in the bond market than there is in the equity market. And those guys kind of know what they're doing over, if you look back over decades and decades, and if you look at where the 10-year treasury yield is now, it's still very low. And that means that the bond guys, those really smart guys, are saying that inflation is really not so much of a problem. 
Hmm. So I look at that and I put a lot of weight on that. So those guys have been right for a long time and consistently. And the other argument for deflation is the, this idea that we have so much innovation coming online and it's dropping those costs so fast that it's actually going to lower the price of, say, your car that you're driving in and all of that. Now, here's the big issue, though, depending on who you are and where you are in life, and not to mention where you are with the cost loading index. But for, say, an older person, as we age, we tend to have higher medical expenses. Well, the cost of medical care, that inflation has traditionally been significantly higher than the overall inflation. So older people may have a different inflation index. In other words, when you retire, and you're trying to plan your budget and how much you're going to spend, it might be significantly higher than you're thinking because a bigger portion of your income is going to go towards medical expenses, which are gaining at a faster rate. Okay. So they're in um, exploding one of the myths that we've mm -hmm. all grown up with is that when I retire, I need less money than when I'm working. Exactly. Exactly. Just to give you a, a couple statistics on that, over the last five years, healthcare inflation has moved higher on average by 2.47%, while overall inflation was up 2.1%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but when you compound that over the years, it becomes significant. Yeah. So, un, all right. So, th and this is why people need to just talk to you, John, because you're, you're making my brain hurt. Um, <laughs> So you've got to understand or at least understand the cost of living index at some level, but then you add on top of that or next to it or connect the dots of inflation and how that's going to help or hurt my buying power today, tomorrow, the next year, and look down the road a little bit, say, okay, compounding that, what's it going to look like in the future? Because our medical costs are going to go up or down in the future. Well, my guess is up. I don't know, but I need to be planning for that now so that I can be ready then. Exactly, and what's your person, and really consider what your personal inflation is gonna be like too. Yeah. Because in some ways, if, have you ever heard of a re regressive tax? Have you ever heard of that? No. So a regressive tax is when governments or municipalities tax things like food. So necessary items, no matter where you are on the income scale. Because okay. it hurts disproportionately lower income people. And these things that the argument is they're going to actually decrease in costs, like your Teslas are actually going to be cheaper to drive, cheaper to own, cheaper to operate. So they say, and it looks like that's the case so far, then your, your older vehicles. Well, somebody with a lower income is not going to be able to for that brand new Tesla, but arguably it would be cheaper for them if they could afford it. It's kind of a Catch weird you. to wrap your mind around, but this in this inflation versus deflation is really kind of a regressive tax on the middle and lower income individuals. Hmm. That's another thing to consider. You know, what is your personal inflation looking like as opposed to just what they publish in the news and talk about which is the CPI. Okay. Price inflation. A great question. Yeah, because I've never thought about it. Of um, what is your personal inflation rate? Is that kind of would that be the right question? That's right. Yeah. Exactly. Huh. Um, I've never thought about that. I've always just thought of inflation as around the the you know as just, a yeah. macro thing, not a micro thing. Right. It can, and this is this is why it's it, it becomes what I call the complex adaptive system. Right. It's not complicated, and if there's an answer to it, it's complex. There's so many different items yeah. that go into this. And we did a whole podcast on the complex adaptive system that you can yeah. go back and and find because it was really complex. Um, but you made <laughs> it sound so simple. Um, but COLA, not COLA, COLI, cost of living index, is a number that we can find online, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, inflation rate we can find on online, but to really, really understand it, we need to just reach out to John Browning because you understand this stuff and, and it's just part of 
the whole investment portfolio that you help your clients do when you when you're working with them because you have that relationship to know where they are in life and what they're wanting to do in life and how how this I mean, this is really fascinating topic because it's not, most people think of an, of an investment advisor, advisor like you, a financial advisor, dealing with stocks and bonds and mutual funds and all, and all that stuff. I don't know that I've ever factored in cost of living index and inflation into that whole picture. So that's very fascinating, but that's what you do. <laughs> yep, that's what I do every day. I think about all that cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe it's not that cool. <laughs> cool stuff. Yeah, you just definitely got the geek hat for today. <laughs> I am so grateful to God for you, John Ronnie, and people like you because that would drive me batty um, <laughs> to try to understand how all that, but you love it. And that's why people need to reach out to you and have discussions. This is not a one time. I mean, that's the thing I love. They're going to reach out to you, John. It's not a sales call. You're not going to ask them to sign on the dotted line. You're going to have conversations and see if there's a fit. See if you can help people because you you don't, that's the thing. You don't give any financial advice until you you have a client relationship. And right. that's, that, that's not going to come on the first call. That's going to come through a series of conversations and your five whys and all those other fun things to build the relationship with that person so that you can help them build a life, not just a portfolio, which is the, the title of your Amazon bestselling book, by the way. Uh, people can ask you for a copy of that. That's right. Which is really intriguing. It's a very, very good book. Um, but yeah, just reach out to John, the Coley. Ask him about the Coley Wars and see where he goes there. Um, and, and maybe you will have a picture of one of those Star Wars things. That's kind of fun. Um, That's right. We should do that. That would be fun. Um, but cost of living, inflation, and where is it going and how does it affect you personally? Well, who knows? Well, John Browning knows. So and let me encourage you just to reach out. GuardianRockWealth.com is how you can get a hold of John. And listen to this podcast again, reach out to him, schedule an appointment, just have a conversation and you'll be amazed at what he knows and how he can help you build a life, not just a portfolio. John, any, any last parting co co comments on uh, Coley or inflation or anything else? Well, just remember as you're, as you're thinking through these things that uh, inflation and cost of living are real items that are kind of like a silent tax on your earnings. And if you are living scared is what I call it. And you're, you're, you're hoarding cash because you're so afraid of the politics, the world, the situation and all that just realize that you are likely losing money, almost certainly losing purchasing power on the dollars that you're holding in your bank that you consider your safe uh, assets. So just be careful how much of that cash, it can make a significant difference in as you build your life as to what you'll be able to do. That's great. We'll do a whole episode on that. I've got some ideas around that. Um, but we'll talk about that on another episode. This has been fascinating talking about Coley and inflation. It's been very helpful to me. Helped me understand a few things. So John Browning, guardianrockwealth.com. Thank you so much again for a great episode. All right. We'll see you next week.